Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light. Now, if you have got role plays ahead of you as part of the police promotion process or as part of the police recruitment process, then this interview is for you because I've got top 10 tips for you, which have emerged from a session I've just done with someone from the United States of America, which was absolutely awesome. Um, I was going to say a constable, not a constable, a police officer who's in the promotion process, wanting to get promoted to sergeant. Um, and interestingly, in the United States, police forces, police departments use role plays as a way of determining whether you are a suitable candidate to be promoted to the rank of sergeant. In exactly the same way that role plays were used for the Osprey system of promotion exam for PC to sergeant and sergeant to constable, sorry, sergeant to inspector, sergeant to constable, sergeant to inspector, in the UK, back in the 90s and the early noughties, uh, and in some forces still used. I believe Police Scotland still use them. Police Service of Northern Ireland use them for potential recruits, and also um, the Metropolitan Police use them for potential recruits as well. So role plays are returning, and role plays apparently are a big, big thing in the United States. So if you are over the pond in the United States, then this video is for you. If you're looking to get promoted to sergeant or lieutenant, you don't have inspectors there, do you? You have lieutenants. Anyway, so I did a couple of sessions with uh, someone who's getting promoted, or they will get promoted because they're going to do awesomely, to sergeant in, uh, from a police department in California. Uh, we did it via Zoom. And um, 10 things emerged that they really, really need to focus on. Otherwise, they're going to really mess up their role play. So I thought I'd share those with you now can't go into too much detail because I just don't have the time. Um, but for those of you who are my clients, uh, jump over to the interview course um, Facebook group where I'll give you the second video that goes with this one. And if you're a serving police officer, go to the Enforce Advancement Group Facebook group. The Enforce Advancement Group Facebook group. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is for serving police officers uh, where we meet uh, for both of these courses, actually. We meet on a weekly basis where we actually get to practice interview skills. If there's sufficient of you, might even get to practice some uh, role play skills as well. We'll do some role plays, which would be just awesome. So anyway, this was from a one-to-one -one, and uh, there were 10 things that cropped up. First one is structure. You've got to have a structured approach. And apparently in the United States, there's all sorts of books out there. They all seem incredibly complicated and far removed from the practicalities of what you'd really, really actually do if you were an outstanding sergeant. So the structure we utilise is based on a non-contact conflict management model that the police in the United Kingdom used to use back in the 90s. It seems to have fallen out of favour for a different model, national decision model. But I kind of like CUDSA, which stands for you confront the scenario, the situation, you understand it, you define and summarise it. This is where you reflect back to the role player what they've actually said and you quote any policies or legislation that might be relevant and then the s stands for solutions where we deliver solutions around enforcement prevention advocacy you, you're going to explain to them how you're going to assess and monitor the situation leading to a certain result your aim for what you hope to achieve the result could so now there's a lot more to each stage especially the understanding phase I'm going to share with you some, there's, I've got like, I could do a top 20 list of tips for the understanding phase. But one of the things that cropped up the other day was um, this questioning style. No multiple questions and only use limited closed questions. So a question like, do you have family issues for a personnel issue for um, a potential sergeant? The answer is always going to be no. Whereas if you pose that as an open question, so what's causing this change of behaviour? You're going to get a lot further with role play, um, especially if you use all the different uh, rapport building phrases that we can utilise to wrap around that type of open question, um, especially things like Ted Pye, which I cover elsewhere. Um, all right, here's the third one. Everything the role player says is true. I'll just leave that there. Everything the role player says is true. Now, get off your defensive hobby horse, police officers who are hoping to get promoted. 
um, because certainly on this occasion, and this has happened so many times before when I've been coaching people for promotion, role plays, over the years, I say over the years, I've been doing this now for over a quarter of a century. So back in the 90s and the early noughties when you had to do role plays to get promoted to sergeant or inspector, I was supporting and helping my uh, fellow colleagues to succeed in those role plays. Um, don't get defensive. Don't quote you know, if it's a member of the public coming in who's complaining about uh, a discriminatory practice by a police officer. Don't quote stats to demonstrate that a police force as a police department you're not discriminatory let's think about why because it's very similar to a burglary so if you're attending a burglary or breaking and entering whatever you call it in the united states you wouldn't say well i'm really sorry about this burglary but the good news is that actually burglary has decreased by six percent over the past year you just wouldn't say it, would you? Because it just doesn't matter to the victim of the burglary. In the same way, the person who's a victim of the discrimination doesn't care whether your department's stats say that you're not discriminatory. Because their lived experience that they're complaining about is that you are. Everything the role player says is true. So accept everything they say and don't get defensive. And do not say anything along the lines of, well, the reason why you might have been stopped, this is referring to someone who's black, is because the police might be looking for someone who's a suspect for a robbery. Do not say anything like that because straight away you're perpetuating the discrimination that the person's complaining about. So you're actually becoming a discriminator yourself. You're associating someone who's black with a, a suspect for a robbery. Don't go there. Accept everything that the role player says to be true. Watch out for the hook. There's always going to be a hook that's going to take you deeper into the role player, into the role, role player's experience. So watch out for the hook. Um, don't let yourself get controlled by the role player. In all of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of practice role plays I've done with people for to get into the police and also once they're in the police to get promoted, as a role player, I will always try and take control of the conversation. And then 95% of the time, I succeed. I shouldn't be in control of the role play. You should. Number seven, my story. I've been on this road before. Yes, that has been said by a role by a, a candidate who I've been practicing with to do with a personnel issue for promotion. The role play is not interested in the road that you've been on before. They're not interested in your experience. They're interested in their experience. You should be doing very little talking. They should be doing all of the talking because you're asking them awesome questions. Uh, number nine, alternative lifestyle. Do not refer to the role player as having an alternative lifestyle. No, just don't go there. Don't go there. Their lifestyle is an alternative. Their lifestyle is theirs. It's unique to them. It's not alternative at all. And number 10, when it comes to solutions, especially with personnel issues, um, we are going to be specific. We're going to follow organisational policy. We're not going to say things that are vague, like I'll talk to him in his supervision. Or on some level, where maybe we could look at some training or is this a pattern of behaviour? Or we'll think of some way to address this. No, just no, just no. Good sergeants aren't vague like that. Good sergeants are specific about delivering organisational policy. So there you go, folks. Ten top tips for role plays. Some of them, if your potential recruits won't apply to you because you're not dealing with personnel, personnel issues, but the principles do apply to you. And there's many more as well. There's many more. Come and join me in one of those interactive sessions or in a one-to-one. -one. I'll put some details below about how you can access those. Like I said, I've been practicing role plays with people in the police now for over a quarter of a century. I aced my exams when it came to me doing the role plays. I actually quite enjoyed them because I'd practiced for them. I'd come up with systems and processes and I've been improving on those for, I can't say for decades, for decades now. Thousands and thousands of people have benefited from this experience. Next person to experience uh, benefit from that experience is going to be you.
Uh, check the links below. Come and join me. You absolutely won't regret it. Um, I'll catch you with you soon. And if you're from across the pond, I can't wait to see you. Hear more about how policing is done in America. I'll catch you with you soon. Bye-bye for now.